Hey there, everybody. My name is Allison Ostrander, and I'm the Director of Risk Tolerance here at Simpler Trading. And in today's options video, I am actually going to switch gears from what I've been looking at prior and look at a potential bullish trade idea. Now, part of that reason is for the market itself. Uh, overall, we were doing a pretty good job of holding below the 100 period simple, which we know can be a bearish sentiment. Um, and then we had CPI and CPI, the market reacted positively too, right? So we had this great bounce up, we broke the 100. And so now we're attempting to try and hold this as support. Now, I don't know if this is going to last very long. Maybe we're finally starting to see the turn back up in the market to go back into an overall bullish trend. That's always a possibility. Or it could be a case like this or like this, where we barely break above the 100, we attempt to trend, but then ultimately fail and give it back and then move lower. And if that's the case, then we'll certainly be ready for some potential bearish entries again. But right now, we're not getting a hint of that, at least not at the moment. The market has a bullish signal in the compound breakout tool. We have momentum building up with room to move higher. Bollinger bands are still pointed up. The trend itself with the moving averages is still in consolidation. So we do want to be mindful of that. Um, but overall, we're not falling apart today at the open. We're still struggling to break 4,000, something else we want to be aware and mindful of. But we're not completely dropping back off. Right. So for that reason, that's part of why I wanted to switch gears and maybe look at a couple bullish trade ideas to help even out the account some, especially if you're like me and you've been more on the bearish side recently. And so I have for you Netflix. Now, when you look at the big picture point of view on this, I completely understand. Right. It was in a bearish trend for quite some time earlier this year. And so a part of you are, is probably asking, really, Allison, Netflix, you're looking at for a bullish entry. Uh, but I am for a few different reasons. The first reason is more recently, right? Whenever we broke above the 100 in the market, we also saw that break above the 100 in Netflix. But unlike the market where we ultimately gave it back up in September, October, right, when we started to go down um, towards the end of October and broke back below it until recently. Netflix, on the other hand, actually did a really good job of holding up here. Now, from an outside perspective, right, part of that is because we did have some guidance bumping up Netflix, right, and people's targets and things like that, which helped out. Uh, there's also the case of Netflix potentially going to an ad subscription style service like we've seen a lot of other streaming services have done like Hulu in the past and things like that. And so Netflix, <laughs> which said they weren't going to do stuff like that, is now all of a sudden looking at it, which, of course, you know, which means potential more money and shareholders like that, more subscriptions. So it's actually done overall a pretty good job from a technical perspective, though. Right. Take out all that outside noise. Netflix has just done an excellent job of holding the 100, even when it came back down to test it, which is always a key clue on if it's going to try and remain bullish or not. Netflix did a beautiful job of holding it. We actually made some bullish divergent bars and then we bounced up into earnings and earnings was actually able to break outside of this first consolidated range and try and push us higher. And this level that used to be resistance around 250 is now in turn acting as support. More recently, we actually had some true low signals. Now, I haven't been paying attention to this indicator as frequently on a daily chart. I've actually been watching it more on the indexes and bigger symbols on weekly and monthly timeframes for potential reversal signals or finally a good place to buy the dip for a longer term bullish trend. Um, but Netflix is not technically in that bearish trend anymore. When this signal started to print, we did not have the Bollinger Bands flaring open with that possibility of a continuation lower. And so this right here was already starting to become a valid signal of this might be a good place to quote unquote buy a dip, either at least to go up and test resistance, if not continue higher in the trend. To add to that signal, we also have a great bullish signal setting up in the compound breakout tool. Momentum, which was at exhaustion back here from this run up, 
has had a good reset and is picking back up with room to move higher. So that looks good here. And the Bollinger Bands, which were a bit more flat this morning, are attempting to open up. So I like all of this. The only caution I have here on Netflix right now is of course we're right by these prior highs and we're at 300, which is of course going to be a psychological level. So that's the caution. If you haven't been following along with me on this trade in the simpler community to already start to play this move up, um, then we do wanna be mindful of this range. And obviously I am recording this video right now at 9.42, it's only been like an hour, 40 minutes into the open. So if you're watching this video after market closed today, be mindful and go back to see where Netflix ended up closing at. Were we able to break and hold above 300? Are the Bollinger Bands opening up? Or did all of a sudden we see a strong sell-off bring us back down? If we did see the strong sell-off sell -off bring us back down, then wait tomorrow to see if we reverse and hold these supports. If we do, end up reversing a little and holding support, then something like a put credit spread or a broken wing call butterfly to the upside would not be bad ideas to consider to play for the idea that this is trying to trend higher, or at the very least, if you get a pullback entry, that it's going back up to test 300 again. On the flip of that, if this looks very much like this into the close, or we do start to really break above 300 and maybe these prior highs around 304 and end up higher, then I still like the idea, especially at that point, that this could continue to stair step up. The only thing I wish this chart had right now is a squeeze, but everything else about it to me looks pretty good. And the best thing about this Netflix right now that I like personally is when the market was trading down earlier this morning, Netflix was doing an excellent job of trying to maintain support and even continue the bounce that it had. Here's actually the intraday charts from this morning. So here where Netflix opened, didn't really give up a lot, did a great job of even holding the smaller time frame support levels. And so this to me, right, is in a way acting like a slight honey badger where if the market does start to give it back up, Netflix might have a chance of doing a bit better job of holding up, especially because of what we've seen in the past. If the market does continue to move higher, well, certainly that's going to benefit Netflix because it's already trading in that direction. So as I talked about, a few different ways you could look to trade this. You could consider, and we've already taken a couple trades in the Profit Recycling Mastery actually, but let me switch accounts not to confuse you guys with strikes there. Um, but you could look to do this a few different ways, right? So like I mentioned, if you did get a pullback down into support, you could look at something like an at the money credit spread. I personally would not do a credit spread at 300 in case this ends up holding as a price level, right? But if you're back down near the simple moving averages around 275 range and it holds, something like an at the money credit spread would not be a bad place to go about it on the put side. Otherwise, even on a pullback or if we continue higher, I also like the idea of something like a broken wing butterfly in case the trend does continue to trade to the upside. So if that's the case, you could look at something like this. And this is not a bad risk versus reward here. 305, 310, 312, 50. Certainly if we break above the 304, 305 range, it's already gonna start putting this long strike either at or in the money currently compared to where it's trading. And of course, if we're trading above this after close, and this is when you're watching the video, you can always adjust this to strikes at higher. The next bigger target after that level to the upside on this from a daily perspective, you know, around 320, I would say would not be a bad place to move up to. Let's look at the weekly chart really quickly. Yeah, weekly chart is starting to break resistance and attempt to move higher the next Technical resistance level for me here is all the way up at around 429. Let's make sure we're not about monthly. Oh, look at this, guys. Yeah, I like this to continue higher. Monthly actually has a monthly bullish divergent bar at 305.63. So let's mark that down. 305.63, which hasn't followed through yet. Now, technically, you would want to give this three bars to follow through. So, you know, if we keep stalling here in reverse, one, it may not follow through or two, it might take a full three months for that to happen. So we do wanna be cautious of that. But the reason why I think this could happen sooner than later, other than the fact that we're very close to that level, is we are at bearish exhaustion. 
right? We had this strong selling that occurred. Momentum went down to the bottom of the axis below this red horizontal zero line, which is a sign of exhaustion. And now we're starting to get green bars to pull back and a pullback signal in the compound breakout tool, which of course pairs with some true lows here. Now, I don't necessarily like this myself for a bigger share buy and entry, and maybe I'll be a little late to that if that's what it ends up being because the Bollinger Bands are still technically opening down, but it could be a good sign that we're gonna reverse up into resistance. And even here, we're attempting to hold back above the 100 and the 10, and our next big technical resistance level is still above 400. So I like the possibility that at the very least, we could continue to chop in this range to allow this re to reset, if not continue higher. So back to that daily perspective, something like a broken wing butterfly could be a great benefit. One, it helps keep the risk low. Right now for the 305, 310, 312, 50, it's only about $1.06 cost basis, right? That's not too much capital risk for this trade idea. If we do go up to 310 by the end of the week, which has a lot of open interest around it, right? And we manage to stall there into the close, then you have a max profit potential of around 398. Let's just round this up to 105. I know it's jumping around. So 105 is our entry point, 395 max profit potential. Not a bad risk versus reward. If this goes completely in the money, that's where the forgiveness factor comes in on a debit broken wing butterfly like this. There's still actually a profit potential to it of it settling for 250. That's what the spread would be worth. The difference of the debit spread and the credit spread. So five minus 250 is 250. 250 minus our 105 cost basis means we still have about a 145 profit potential. Well, that's already above 100% return on the risk, even if it goes completely in the money. So I really like how this setup looks. Now, once again, if we're trading higher at close by the time you watch this video or the next day, maybe, you can always look to move this a strike set or two lower to continue to play to the upside. As I mentioned, if we are able to actually really break above 300 in these recent highs and the Bollinger Bands start to flare open a bit more, which is what they're attempting to start to do, I like the possibility of going up towards that 320 range by the end of the week. So, you know, use that with your strikes accordingly here um, on the option chain. But that is what I am looking at. So maybe something to help even out your accounts a bit more. Once again, I'm recording this uh, video closer to the open of market. So be mindful that this might have changed by the close. So just as always, right, do your due dil diligence. Make sure you check the chart. And if it looks like 300 is holding and holding back, then watch to see how support holds and then consider that broken wing butterfly back into 300 or something like a put credit spread. If we're like this or higher into the close, then I still at the very least like the idea of the broken wing butterfly to play for that move higher while still keeping capital risk low. Thank you so much for joining me on this video. I hope y'all have a great rest of your trading day and week. As always, may the trade be with you, my fellow Jedis, and I look forward to talking to you next time. Bye guys. Hey, Allison Ostrander here, Director of Risk Tolerance at Simpler Trading. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like and comment down below to help us out. Also, be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you can get notified when we release our next video. And if you want to watch us trade in real time using our own money, go to simplertrading.com to learn how to sign up. As always, may the trade be with you, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.